Hi, this is Scott Brown with a P10 tool review of the Pico Technology MT-03A milliometer and motor tester. Although you may have seen this tool featured before, in this video we'll walk through several examples of how this tester can be used to identify circuit problems such as high-speed CAN bus data transmission problems, ground circuits, and of course checking three-phase brushless DC motors used in fuel pumps, blower motors, and hybrid and battery electric vehicles. Today's technician charged with diagnosing vehicle problems has in no doubt run into challenges that were difficult to solve. From high-speed communication networks to the high-voltage systems found in today's vehicles, I'm always on the lookout for tools to help me do a better job. And it's safe to assume that the modern technician has many tools for various tasks, and I believe that this is one that once you have it, you'll be able to find even more ways to leverage its power. In recent times, I've seen several open circuit CAN challenges that were fairly straightforward. However, when you have an intermittent communication problems caused by changing circuit resistances, these have been significantly more difficult to solve because of the number of connection points. For example, looking at this ring type system on a GM car, you can have multiple opportunities for failures. Imagine being able to test end to end with this tool. I've got a test bench here, and this is uh, what I use for some ADAS training and mock-up. It is a 2015 Mazda 3. It has LiDAR, forward-facing camera, instrument cluster, uh, PCM, throttle body, ABS controller, radar. It's got a CAN bus system, and this is a star setup. And I'm gonna demonstrate how you can leverage the power of the Pico Technology MT-03A milliometer uh, tester. So this is, this is pretty slick. So we come over here and we look at our traditional DVOM. I'm gonna hook this up to um, one end of the CAN bus. So I've got uh, the PCM over here and we'll get a shot of this. So I've got the PCM connector. This is the end of the CAN bus. We're just shorting across the two, the high and the low here, okay? And then we're gonna come over here to the LiDAR sensor, which is at one of the other ends. And this is a star uh, style setup. Uh, although I do have some ring devices here so i got to get my probe back inside there okay all right and we're going to hook up our our uh, multimeter leads we're going to get a look at what does our ohmmeter say it says 0.8 ohms okay so you would say well that's probably okay but what if we have an intermittent problem so i'm going to i'm going to start pounding on our frame here i'm going to demonstrate a Do we have any movement? Not, not really getting any movement. Okay, so now we're gonna come over. I've got three areas here where we've got uh, junctions where we're tying into the, the CAN bus. So I'm gonna tap on, tap on this, tap on this junction over here. We're gonna tap on this junction over here. Now we got, we see it just, a, there's a little bit of a blip right there. Not much, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our DVOM, okay? And we're gonna connect the Pico Technology MT-03. Now this is using Kelvin probes and just uh, in case you're not familiar with what the Kelvin probes do, uh, the MT-03A is a standalone device. Uh, it's powered by a USB port it does not require uh, the use of a Pico scope or anything. Um, it runs on its own, own software. And you'll see that for each connection, U, V, and Y, which is great for a three-phase uh, uh, motor uh, analysis, but we have two probes for each, okay? And how this works is that we have these two probes that are gonna be running current out and then we're using the other two probes to actually measure voltage drop across that circuit. So we're running uh, 200 milliamps. 
versus what a DVOM typically is running at about 0.2 milliamps, so only 0.2 milliamps. All right, so we're gonna come over here, we're gonna make our connections there. And then on the uh, tool here, we've got the tool stopped. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit run, okay? And now it's showing us that we have 400 and, uh, 442 milliohms, okay? Or 0.44 ohms uh, versus what the DVOM had. So DVOM, uh, we have resistance in the leads. This style setup is uh, not affected by any resistance in the leads. Um, secondary here, we can see there is a graph across the bottom here, okay, and, but we're off the scale. So by default, it opens up, it sets the resistance range to 100. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just set this to 500, okay. And we'll set that up so we can take a look at it, okay. So we're going across, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just shake our vehicle a little bit here, okay, and you can already see a little bit of movement on the on the tool okay and then we're going to go to each of our can taps here okay we're going to tap on that we're going to go to this one we're going to tap on this one we're actually going over 500 so i'm going to go over here and just bump this up to about 600 okay there we go and then we're going to come over here and tap this a little bit. Okay, so we we definitely have a connection problem right in this area. Look, at it got better. So we do have a slightly loose terminal here. So I'm going to go ahead and just tighten this up. Okay. And there's our resistance. So now we can go back. We can do our shaking of the vehicle verify that our, our re resistance values stay steady. And you can see that it's, it is bouncing around a little bit. It might be my, just my terminal connections, but you can see how powerful this is because we're running more current through the circuit, loading it and helping us to identify uh, connections uh, that are very, very sensitive to CAN bus and network communications. Additionally, power and ground circuit resistance is equally important. And sure, in many cases, your trusty DVOM, jumper leads, and loading devices can be used to surface the faults. But when you want to make quick work of analyzing a circuit to know with certainty that the performance of that circuit, you should be aware of the power that this tool can deliver. Okay, we're gonna run another test over here. And on this one here, we're gonna demonstrate how this tool can be used to check, say, some DC contactors. So this is a, a contactor set out of a Prius here. And say that you were gonna buy a used set of contactors or you, you just you had a, a question about the contactors and you wanna know, hey, are these, are these any good, okay? So I've got a, a power supply here. We're gonna go ahead and energize the field coil and measure the resistance across the contactor, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna come here, this is one side, okay? And then this is the other side, all right? And you can see we're open circuit. Um, and this one should have very low resistance. So I'm gonna go here and change my scaling. I'm gonna change this to 50, okay? To give us, give us more Resolution. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, just close the contactors. You can see that you know we're drawing about four, uh, 0.4 amps. Uh, we're at uh, 4.59 milliohms. So I can do a little tap test on this. Let's see how much variance we've got. Not much going on. Then I can just cycle the contactors a few times. And you can see we're going off the scale, but each time we're returning right back to 4.5, 4.6. 
Okay. All right. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how you can leverage this tool for checking uh, contactors. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show the power of the checking a three-phase motor. So we've got a compressor off of a, a hybrid vehicle here. It's got a three-phase motor. This one actually runs all three phases to the compressor itself, okay? And we've got this pass-through connector here. We're, we're not going to test at the harness. We're going to test right at the pass-through connector. So I've got to grab my other channel here. So we're going to have all three, U, V, and W, okay? And so all we need to do is make connection to each of these. So they're all isolated from each other, okay? And then we're going to exit this tool. We're going to hit the home button. We're going to hit the motor test. And it's giving us a warning. Um, you know, you've got to follow all the safety precautions whenever you're doing this kind of work. I'm going to accept. All right. And it says, test in progress, not started. So I'm going to either hit the space bar or just hit the stop button there. And it is now going to test this all for me automatically. So right now it's testing U through to V. And it's running the current one way. And then it's going to reverse the current and give us a good average of what that uh, resistance value is. Then it's going to do V and W, okay, and we're, we're at 630 milliohms, and now we're doing W to U. Okay, and now our test is complete. You can also see that it is temperature compensated, so there is a temperature probe. So when it's doing its test, it can give you a temperature compensation uh, to reference temperature, okay? And then give you what the maximum deviations are. And so you can see here, we've got maximum deviation of 9.4 milliohms, temperature compensation, uh, compensated maximum deviation 9.07, one and a half percent in variance. So this would be a good coil. So I hope you can see the power of this small little tool and what it can do for you. In conclusion, the Pico Technology MT-03A is an awesome tool with its ability to provide precise temperature compensated resistance measurements. And I think you can see how versatile this tool is. I hope you found this information helpful and informative. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching. Thank you.